in my head when I was up last. I wanted to shout, Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. See the difference between Mother's Day and Father's Day? <laughs> I want all the fathers to stand. All the fathers that are in here, stand. All the fathers, stand, 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 stand. Now I want you to, all the fathers to come, come and stand across the front, if you will, that we might honor you on, on this morning. Turn and face the congregation, if you will. Now let's give them a great round of applause. Come on, ladies. Come on, thank God. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. We appreciate, we appreciate these men of God, not just fathers, but men of God also that have uh, raised and helped raise children and have made an indelible impression in the lives of, of, of their children. Amen. And we thank God for each of, each of you. Each of you, we're not, we're not just trying to mix words or make words. I mean it with all my heart. Thank God for the men, for the fathers of this church, of this, of this church. Let me make it personal. Of this church, thank you so much for what you do as, as, as fathers, as fathers. And we have a little something for you, not, 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 a, not, a, not a whole lot, not a whole lot. But if you, two of you put it together, what we're about to give you, you might be able to get a cup of coffee, no, <laughs> but we'll have a little something for you at this time. We're going to ask those persons that have been designated to, to hand them something. Please come as our young people are coming. Amen. And the old saying is don't spend it all in one place, but you will have to spend that in only one place. <laughs> Amen. But again, we want to thank God. Let's pray for these fathers. Father, we thank you for these men, for these fathers. And we thank you, God, how you blessed their lives, how you blessed them to be fathers, and how they've been fathers indeed. Father, we thank you because even when we let the light down, you forgave us and gave us all another chance. And we thank you for that now. I pray for your covering upon these fathers now, that you'll touch each of their lives, that they'll recognize, God, there is still so much in them that they can give to the kingdom and they can even instill in the lives of young people that may not even be their children, God, but you've given them a special gift. Thank you for this day of celebration. We honor them, God, for being fathers. We honor them for being men of God. Cover their lives. Keep them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, clap those hands again. Let's thank God. Thank you. Thank you. Matthew, the sixth chapter. Matthew, chapter six. And then the fifth chapter of the book of James. Matthew chapter 6, look at verse 5. And when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites of the pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets, that they may be seen by men. 
Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you pray, go into your room and when you have shut your door, pray to your father who is in the secret place. And your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do. For they think that they will be heard for their many words. Verse 8, therefore, do not be like them, for your father knows the things you have need of before you ask him. Let's look at James chapter 6, just one verse. Verse 16. Confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Before I pray, I, I, I was tossing this week with a lot of things and tossing with what to speak today for this Father's Day. And this thought came in mind, and it'll be clear as we get into this message. I want to talk today from this thought, when men take a knee. When men take a knee, Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us now. I pray, God, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will be acceptable and pleasing in your sight. For, Lord, you are my strength and you are my redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. It's too much coming back. I don't know whether you have noticed or not, but prayer is slowly becoming uh, a missing ingredient in the lives of believers. And for some reason, we have slowly moved away from the ground root of the Christian faith. And that is the authority that comes from and through prayer. It's interesting here because uh, Dr. Miles Monroe in his book, Understanding the Power and Purpose of Prayer, uh, gives us four definitions of prayer. He says, he says prayer is number one, prayer is man giving God the legal right and permission to interfere in the earth's affairs. Secondly, he says, uh, is a terrestrial or a thing having to do with land and carnal, but it is a terrestrial license for a celestial interference. Thirdly, he says, prayer is man exercising his legal authority on earth to invoke heaven's influence in the planet. It's something here because, because these definitions may not fit our normal understanding of prayer. But when you read 2 Chronicles 7 and 14, it, it speaks of the authority that is found in prayer. It says something like this, if my people who are called by my name. Does your Bible read you like that? If they will humble themselves and pray, my face, turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, I'll forgive their sin, and I'll heal their land. 
This is one of the most powerful scriptures in the Bible, yet also one of the most neglected scriptures in the Bible. The scripture concerning prayer gives us the authority to determine what will happen on earth. As a matter of fact, if we carefully study God, uh, study God's dealing with mankind and the earth, you and I will find that God did nothing on earth without the cooperation of a person. Amen. Every action, every action, stay with me, stay with me. Every, every action taken by God in the earth realm require the involvement of a human being. And when God needed to rescue humanity in the flood, he, he needed a one, one by the name of Noah. When God needed uh, the creation of a nation, he needed a man by the name of Abraham. When God needed someone to lead the nation of Israel, he called on someone by the name of Moses. And when he needed to bring back Israel from captivity, he needed one by the name of Daniel. And when he desired to defeat Jericho, he needed Joshua. And when he needed to preserve the Hebrew nation, he needed Esther. And when he needed to bring salvation to mankind, he needed to become a man. Prayer, therefore, is not an option, but prayer is a necessity. Hang in there with me. I'm going somewhere with this. It's not an option. Prayer is a necessity. And, and if we don't pray, then heaven can't get involved with what concerns us. Uh, that I know this sounds strange to, to some of you. If, if we don't pray, I, I know the Bible says that he knows what we have need of before we ask it, but, but, but that doesn't mean that, that we sit back and do nothing. If we don't pray, then heaven, give me some more volume on this, then heaven can't get involved with what concerns us. Well, heaven desires to do, but will not act right away. Heaven waits for someone on earth to desire first and then will act. Understand something. The church stands on earth to accomplish the perfect will of God. If we church can meet God's will, God will not be restricted. But if we are not willing to rise to his will, then God becomes restricted then. I, I, I know some of you are probably say, how can God be restricted? It's because if he hears no voice coming from earth. Oh, I, this might be a little, a little deep for, 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 for some of y'all today, but if he hears no voice coming from earth, then we restrict God. We, we almost tie the hands of God. And, and when he hears no voice, when he, when he hears no prayer coming from earth, and not just prayer from anywhere, but listen to me, fathers, prayers coming from men. Mm. I think you know where I'm going, and I'm going I'm to keep on trucking right there. Heaven desires to do but will not act right away. As I told you, listen, the measure of the of God within the church today determines the measure of the manifestation of that power. And the question that needs to be asked or the question that arises is, what is mankind, what is man's role in the prayer ministry of the church? Well, I found that, I found that it is God telling the church what he wishes to do so that the church on earth will pray out what God wants done. Uh-oh. That's why the Bible talks about in the gospel writers where that you, we can't be repetitious in our prayers. We just can't keep repeating the same thing over again. We need to find out, God, what is your will? And then begin to pray the will of God. Oh, bless his name. Well, it's something here, B, because prayer is not asking God to do what, he, what we want. But prayer is asking him to do what he wants. 
I got to say it again. It got to be because we oftentimes pray about things. You know, it sounds foolish sometimes to, to folk uh, um, um, when we tell folk, listen, to pray, uh, pray, pray about the job. Uh, don't just take any job. Now, now, I'm not talking about if you ain't got nothing going on, but, 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 now, uh, but now, is that the place God wants me? You see, y'all you, missing this. All, all, is, is that the place God wants me? I, I often wonder, and, 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 and people told me as a social worker, they said, you know, you know you're never going to make no money, right? Because no, uh, people don't make money out of being a social worker unless you got a doctoral uh, thing and everything. But, but, but the point was, I used to always ask, uh, why is it that you have me at this place at this time? And you've heard my, my testimony so many years later going back to Harrisburg preaching a street, preaching a citywide revival on one occasion. Several of my former, uh, I don't want to call them my clients because they weren't clients. They, were, they had been in trouble. And so uh, ex-inmates, I guess they are, came up to me after the revival and said, I'm saved now. Now, 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 I didn't say that for any kind of hand clap. I said that because we need to understand, God, am I in the place where you desire me to be? So when I pray, rather than my prayers always complaining to God about my crazy supervisor, but my prayer being God, your will being done on earth as it is in heaven. And so the writer, and so the writer says, prayer is not just asking God, not just asking God to do what we want, but asking Him to do what He wants. If, if we pray, if the church does not pronounce on earth the will of God, then we will be of very little value in the hand of God. I, I don't know if you would agree with me or not, but I believe there is a lot of unfinished business in heaven. Hmm. because God is unable to find an outlet for his will on earth. Uh-oh, I'll say it again. There's some unfinished business in heaven. As a matter of fact, we need to admit that we can be extremely selfish when it comes to prayer. Uh-oh. Oh, I, hear, I, I, I heard absolutely nothing over this side. I heard a few yes over here. We can become extremely selfish. Oh, bless his name. Father, bless me with a bigger house when, when you know there are people that have no place to live. We can become, come on, we can become extremely selfish in our prayer lives. Come on, people of God. We can become extremely selfish in, in our prayer life. If the church does not pronounce on earth the will of God, then we will not be a very, of very much value in the hand of God. I don't know, again, as you would agree or not, but there's a lot of unfinished business in heaven because God is unable to find an outlet for his will on earth. The manifestation of God's power will not exceed the prayer of the church. The power of God will be seen according to the greatness of the church's prayer life. In heaven, God's power is unlimited. But on earth, hear me good, on earth, the manifestation of this power is dependent on how much the people of God pray. Well, it's something here because when I, when I looked at this, the the Bible teaches that those who have the habit of prayer are known to experience only the blessings of God, but uh, not only the blessings of God, but also the peace of God. Those who have served God significantly have been men and women with an earnest prayer life. If you were to trace the history of the Christian church, you will find that the key to power in prayer is in Acts, the first chapter, verses 1 and verse 14. These, it says, these all with one mind were continually devoting uh, themselves to prayer. Whenever there has been a great spiritual awakening, whenever there has been a mighty movement of the people of God, 
that awakening and that movement can be traced back to Christians on their knees before God in prayer. Look at somebody say, take a knee, take a knee. Well, 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 tradition tells us that James was martyred in 62 AD. He, he, he was cast down from the temple, beaten to death. And as he died, he spoke the words, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. James found it necessary to write his items, uh, uh, to write to the Christian Jews who were suffering various uh, trials that were testing their faith. It sounds almost similar to what believers are experiencing in this particular day. Some have given up on prayer because it seems as if prayer is not working. Prayer is not working because we are not praying. Uh-oh. Speak for yourself, Pastor. I am speaking for myself. Prayer is not working because more and many of us have given up on the power of prayer. We choose when we're going to come and pray. Amen. And that's why it seems like there's no power in, in prayer. Some have reached a place where they don't feel prayer is effective. But the Bible still holds true when it says, In the Lord, with all thine heart. Lean not into thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. If prayer is always centered on self or on our personal problems and our small gain or our small loss, where is there room for God's will to get through? It's interesting. It's interesting. Many come to the church with the attitude of observing or just attending and consequently they they get nothing out of worship but when the saints of God understand the will of God and the prayer ministry of the church then there is agreement in heaven and there's agreement on earth where there is harmony that's where you'll find the will of God well matter of fact if our gathering for worship meets his requirements or meets the requirements of heaven, hear me real good, then after the service, the people will know whether the spirit of the Lord was present. Hear me again. And if, 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 if our gathering for worship meets the requirements of heaven, uh-oh, <laughs> then after we leave here, you'll know whether the spirit of the Lord was present or not. If our prayer is in accordance with the mind of God and the will of God, not only will we be and not only will it be answered, but it will also be remembered and be rewarded at the judgment seat of Christ. Well, it's a foolish it is foolish for folk to say I don't need since God knows all my needs. Why should I pray? God, God knows I, I need a house. Uh, God knows I need a Frigidaire. Uh, God knows I need a, a car, I need a job. Well, the prayer is a sign of reverence. And can I go out on a limb and tell you that a lot of Christendom has taken God for granted. Uh-oh. We've taken God for granted. So it's, it's foolish to say that I, I don't need to pray since God knows all my needs. And, and the purpose of prayer is not to notify God, people, but to express our trust and our faith in God and our expectations and, and, and our heart's desire of him. The problem is this. The problem is we don't understand the privilege called prayer. How many of you can testify that prayer brings a peace to your spirit when you're done. Even when the situation hasn't changed. Oh, come on, come on. Even when the circumstance looks still the same. Oh, bless his name. 
when you got done praying, something happened. Can I get a witness on that as the old Baptist preacher said? Uh, something happened when I got done praying. I can't put my finger on it. Can't, can't tell you exactly what had happened, but all I know is I, I started to, I felt something in my spirit. Any, anybody ever felt something in your, like a shift took place where, where the, there was a pain there earlier when I got down to pray? And I'm not talking about a physical pain all the time. The spiritual issue was there earlier, but when I got done praying, when I got up off my knees, my God, that's how I knew that I connected with God. Something began to happen on the inside. I, 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 the old saying says I looked at my hands and my hand looked new. I, I looked at my feet and they did too well. I come to tell you something happens when you pray. And you'll know when you pray through. Because there's a shift that oftentimes takes place. Well, the problem is we don't understand this privilege. The name Father is a new way for us to address God. Formerly, men called him Almighty God, Most High God, Everlasting God, called him Jehovah God, but not Father, but because of Jesus, he invites us to call God Father. And in order to understand the authority of prayer, we must understand subjection to his authority be, before we can exercise the rights of his authority. Well, now the Bible reveals a close relationship between prayer, fasting, and authority. Prayer, prayer speaks of our desire before God. Fasting illustrates our self-denial. When prayer and fasting, hear me good, are joined, faith will instantly surface. My God. Has anybody ever seen, experienced that when you fasted, you weren't just hungry, but something happened. Something, something happened to me in the spirit. Anybody been there? Something happened to me in the spirit realm. Now, I'm not talking about y'all that eat all the time. I'm talking about folk that don't mind turning their plates down. Because Jesus said, some things, these kind, will only come out. Oh, I hear it in my spirit now like God's calling us to a fast here. But these kind will only come out by fasting and by praying. When, when you deny yourself, it's a sign to God that at least he's trying. At least she's trying. When you deny yourself the necessities like food sometimes. Now, 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 I'm not talking to you that got to take medicine around the clock. I'm, I'm talking about you all who trust God and believe God. And I was, is, is a healer before you started taking medicine. He was a healer. And don't miss this message. I'm not telling you to stop taking your medicine. You keep on taking your medic medication because it keeps you calm. Praise the Lord. But I'm saying to you that when you mix fasting, ask your neighbor, when's the last time you, last time you went on a fast? When's the last time you went on a fast? Oh, come on, come on. When's the last Well, I, I tried to fast, but my ankles swell. Well, put your feet in cold water and leave that hamburger alone. My God. Oh, I tried to fast, but, uh, but, but, but somebody stopped by the house and brought some cookies and some cookies and milk by the house. And, oh, turn it down, Bernie Mac. Turn it down. Turn it down. Leave the cookies and milk alone and stay on your fast. You want to know why you need to stay on your fast? Because healing has been known. Healing has been known to take place when you go on a fast. Oh, you might find out if I turn this plate down and trust God, God will regulate my blood system. God, God will regulate these, these migraine headaches if I just trust God. Touch your neighbor and say, take a knee, take a knee, take a knee, take a knee. Listen, listen, I'm, I'm almost done with this. The Bible reveals that close relationship between prayer and fasting. 
The Bible says in Ephesians 6 and 18, we are to watch and pray. This means we need to be watchful on the one hand and prayerful on the other hand. Watching and discerning, that's what it means, watch and discerning the schemes of the enemy of our soul. Bible says that James gave us specific instruction concerning how to pray so that specific needs might be met. Is any among you suffering? Check your word. James, James, that's James, James 5. He says, let him what? Pray. If any among you sick, let them call for the elders so they can pray. And the prayer of faith, my God, my God, will save the sick and the Lord will raise him up. My God, listen, listen. Do you understand how powerful prayer is? I don't know about you, but I'm, 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 I'm just tired of seeing a lot of folks sick. When I'm preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ and preaching about the one that the, the, we claim is the son of the father and, and, and folk are walking around sick, I, 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 I want to get back to the place where you speak the word of God. Y'all not going to help me here today. Uh, I'm pulling this load all by myself. It's all right. I knew I would. Listen, I, I, I want to get back to the day where, where, where somebody sick could walk by one of the saints. And the power of God, I feel like preaching now, and the power of God be, be so strong in the place that not a sick body could leave the place. I pray for the day that there will be men in the church that don't just like titles, don't just positions, but men full of the Holy Ghost and that with power. Somebody shout power right there. Power in prayer. Power in healing ministry. Power in the ministry of salvation. Power when you speak the needs. Power to discern the devil and the wiles of the devil. Power to determine and know a demon when you see a demon. Power, God, I feel like preaching. Power in the Holy Ghost. Power in his name. Power under the anointing. Power in prayer. Power that calls out a devil. Somebody shout power. Well, let me close this. Hey, Shekanabosha. Glory. Hekananabosha. Lord have mercy. I didn't stir something. I stir something here. Hey, Shekanabosha. She nananabosha. Glory. This, 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 this being Father's Day. I thought it would be appropriate. Mention the fact that prayer begins with the men. The Bible has been called by many females as chauvinistic. And yeah, I would agree there are some chauvinistic points that Paul makes. One, he says women keep silent in the church. If that happened in the church, you heard nothing in the church. Because <laughs> there's more women than there are men in the church. But he says something here. I think men, hear me good brothers, I think men have lost their way when it comes to prayer. Oh, bless his name. Can I tell you, the devil is frightened of men who pray. Yeah. Woo, God. Y'all better come and get me because I feel something up here today. The devil is frightened of men who pray. Well, ladies, don't listen, don't misunderstand me now, because 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 y'all y'all powerful in, in prayer also. Listen, but uh, but but men, you frighten the devil. Y'all not gonna help me now. 
If I could ever get you away from ESPN and, and come pray, you, you frighten the devil. Y'all not come. You're not going to tell God. You don't know how scared of you the devil is. The devil was so afraid of Jesus that, the, that, 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 that those demons said, have you come to torment us? So, my God, I wish we get to the day where we come into the house of God and if somebody comes in who's not saved, that they're men with discernment. Men that know how to lead a soul to Christ. Oh, I'm preaching like a pastor now. That know how to lead a soul to Christ. Before you make another deacon, before you make another trustee, before you got to have men that understand the power of prayer. Hallelujah. And understand the need to have discernment. Well, it's something here. Because it's amazing how men want roles in the church but none volunteer to be intercessors. Yeah. You associate preachers can't preach like this. This is the pastor's role here now. Men like titles, but they don't often know the job description that comes with the title. To some de degree, the church has done a disservice to the men or to the fathers, if you please. There should be a requirement if you want to carry any title in the body of Christ. And that is an effective prayer life. Woo, God. I hope this is going out on live stream, live boat, live waves, whatever call it. Uh, an effective prayer life. A prayer life that can be seen. If as men we are not ready and willing to seek God and to seek his face until we hear from heaven, then we are not fit to hold positions in the church. I know this is strong, powerful statement, but too much of the church is lying dormant because there are not men, there are not fathers who are willing to take a knee. Oh, touch somebody say take a knee. Well, when I thought about this take a knee thing, y'all, some of you know, know where I'm going there. There's a football player by the name of Kaepernick, if I said it right. And, and, and a couple years ago, uh, because of the injustice in our nation, uh, being a football player, uh, prior to the game starting, they would play the national anthem. And everybody is considered to stand. Stand, and then some of them put the hand all over their heart like they taught us back in grammar school. And, but this young man this, this decided he wanted to make a statement. And it's been taken out of context what his original intent had always been. Y'all not going to talk to me. Oh, bless his name. They made it sound like it was a race. It had nothing to do with race. It had to do with injustice in a country that is called the home of the free. Or the land of the free and the home of the brave. And so he decided that rather than stand, he decided to take a knee. Good God. Hallelujah. Oh, and in his taking a knee across the nation, there were some other uh, ball players that also decided they would stand with him and took a knee. It wasn't, they didn't turn their backs on the flag. Uh, they didn't cuss at the flag while it was going on. They didn't walk off the field. They stood right there, but they decided to take a knee, my God. Well, I come to the church today. Praise Bishop, all right. I come to the church today to say to the people of God, with the way the country is going right now, I need some men that won't have a problem with taking a knee. I need some men of God that understand the power of prayer. And will make up your mind. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I'll take a knee. And on my knees, I'll call upon his name. Come on, clap those hands and give God the praise. The church needs men. Forgive me, ladies, today, this is Father's Day. The church needs men 
that aren't of shame to take a knee. This man has lost his profession. He's been out of the game now almost years. That's almost impossible to come back to and get back in football shape. But he has not come down off his point. And then our president chimed in and told him that the owners ought to fire everyone who doesn't stand for the flag. Matter of fact, he took it further, stand at attention and put the hand over their heart. Mr. President, if you're watching me live stream, somebody put it on YouTube, my tube, your tube. It had nothing to do with disrespecting America. It had to do with making a point. Just like years ago in the 70s when the three track runners took place, won the gold medal, and held their fists up in the air. Folk got scared around this country. Thought they were trying to start a revolution. They were trying to draw attention to a point. Oh, bless his name. Mr. President, <laughs> it's hard to be respectful when men and women of different colors are being killed in the streets of America. It's hard to stay respectful when your mind is to break up families, take children away from their parents. Hard to respect, but I come to tell you, Mr. President, we are men of God, and we're gonna take a knee. But our taking a knee is gonna be different from what you think it is. We're gonna do like Job. We're going to rent our mantle. Some of you are going to have to shave your head. No, I'm going to play. Some of you are going to have to all right, go down on your face and worship. We're going to take a knee. Can I get a couple brothers right now? Just take a knee. Just take a knee. Just take a knee. Don't mind going back down in prayer. Just any brothers don't mind taking a knee. Don't mind taking a knee. Don't mind taking a knee. This is not a sign of disrespect. This is a sign of authority, sir. When men take a knee, we're saying to you, listen, we could go get our guns. We could go get our guns. We could show unrest in the streets. But we've decided to take a knee. Actually, when you understand, if you ever played mainly football, the coach, Keith, Keith, no, the coach would call the team around him and say, okay, guys, take a knee. It was during that time that the coach would then sow some words to us whether it was after the game and we won or lost, after practice, or we, he would call us in to take a knee. He's about to impart some wisdom to us now. Fathers, men of God, when you and I come together 
and honestly take a knee, we're going to get some freshdom from God as to what to do next. Hallelujah. It's going to take men of God in the house of God to keep our hand on some of this younger generation before they lose their lives in the streets before they're 30 years old. If men of God would take a knee, we'll start seeing a change in the things of God. Stand with me and clap those hands and give God glory. Come on, give him glory. Come on, give him glory. Come on, give him glory. Hallelujah. When you take a knee, something happens. When men take a knee. Years ago, some years back when Sister Angie was here, they sang that song, when the saints go to worship. That's when, I think it's, that's when deliverance takes place. When the saints go up and praise. I don't know the rest of it. Y'all might know it. When the saints go up in praise. We've got a situation right now. They've just taken Deacon and Elsie out to the hospital. I need some men just to gather real quick, brothers. Form, form, form a prayer circle right quick down front, brothers. Come on. Run. Come on, brothers. Come on. Right down front. I want these brothers. I want these brothers. I want these brothers. Turn around. That's it. Turn and join hands. Make a circle. Make a circle. Make a circle. Don't let there be a break in there. Sisters, just reach your hand this way. Oh, God. Come on. When, when men take a knee, my God. When men take a knee. If you're able, brothers, if you're able to get on a knee, take a knee right there if you're able. If, if, if you're not able, I understand. But if you're able, take a knee. 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 My God. My God. Come on. Come on. Come on. Pray, brothers. Pray. Pray. Come on, it's one of our brothers. It's one of our brothers. It's one of our fathers. In the name of Jesus. Come on, sister, stretch your hand this way. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God, we call Deacon Elsie's name before you now, God. In the name of Jesus, we call Deacon Elsie before you now, God. Oh, God, en route to the hospital. Oh, God, touch him while in the vehicle right now. Touch his body from the crown of his head to the very sole of his feet, my God. In the name of Jesus, God, as these men join their hearts in prayer, as we join this anointing in prayer, we pray for Charles right now, God. We hold Deacon Elsie up before you now. In the name of Jesus, he's a prime candidate for healing now. He's a prime candidate for deliverance now. In the name of Jesus, after a word like this today, God. Oh, God, speak, God. Speak, Lord. In the name of Jesus, as we take a knee, as we believe you by faith, as we believe your word, as we trust your word. Oh God, we believe you. 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 You're the only help we know, God. In the name of Jesus. Touch him before he gets there, God. Touch him before he gets there. Dispatch that angel now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. It's for your glory. Come on, brothers, pray. 
Pray that prayer around that circle. Pray till fire hits this circle. Come on. Come on. Pray till you feel the presence of God. Pray till you feel the presence of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man has much power. We pray with power, God. We pray with the anointing. In the name of Jesus, we pray with power. We pray with authority. In the name of Jesus, Satan, I command you, in the name of the Lord, take up your weapons and flee. For the Lord has given us authority in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. By faith. By faith. By faith. We touch and agree. By faith. In the name of Jesus. We touch and agree. And believe you by faith that it's already done. That it's already done. Now let's praise him in this house. Come on, let's praise him in this house now. Come on, let's praise him in this house. Come on, let's praise him in this house. Come on, men of God. Let's hear the men praise. Let's hear the men praise. Let's hear the men praise. Come on, let's hear the men praise. Come on, men of God. Come on, let's hear the men praise. Let's hear the men praise him. Glory, 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 glory. Come on, men of God. Come on, men of God. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, bless his name. Oh, bless his name. Bless your name, Jesus. We thank you. And God, we praise you for hearing our prayer. Now touch, I pray, every man under the sound of my voice that they'll know in this hour you're calling for the men to take a knee and not be ashamed to take a knee. To be willing to stand for what is right according to your word to take a knee. God, not only today, but this will be the stance of these men from this moment on that they will take a knee and as they take a knee God you'll give them discernment they'll be more effective as men of God in Jesus name amen amen come on let's send up a praise in this place now come on let's send a praise come on let's send a praise Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord just told me to sow a seed this morning.